Welcome to Inside the Red Zone, and tonight you are in for a treat. Have you guys ever heard of Willie Spears or the Willie Spears Experience? Well, if not, I'm telling you right now, you better turn it up, turn up the volume, and get ready to stay here with just here with us just a little bit because you will be so motivated to succeed that you're going to feel like you just want to run through a brick wall. You're going to be so motivated after this conversation and meeting our guest. We are so honored to have the Willie Spears on our show. Welcome to Inside the Red Zone. It's bucket list, baby. Come on, Inside the Red Zone with Danny and Michelle. Like, that's what everyone wants. You want to be on a Today Show, Good Morning America, and Inside the Red Zone with Danny and Michelle. And like, that's everybody's bucket list. I got one down, two to go. Thank y'all so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. That's awesome. We love it. Man, I love it. That love is enthusiasm, man. Too. Well, Willie, man, we want to thank you again, man. I've been knowing you for a while and, you know, through the coaching ranks and part of FCA and being around you, had the opportunity to hear you speak a couple of times, man. You're phenomenal. And I consider you a friend, man, because I love everything about Willie Spears and what he stands for. And I just want to thank you again for being on the show tonight, brother. Oh, it's an honor, man. We're on the same team. You know, we're doing the same thing, trying to help as many people as possible. And there's so many ways to do that. FCA is one way we add value to others. Of course, coaching for so long is one way. And now through technology, we can add value to others' lives through podcasts. You know, we can't be every place, but this podcast can. And so uh, I just love what you guys are doing. When I got the link, I checked out some shows. I said, man, they got some big time people on there. They got NFL <laughs> guys and Hall of Famers. I, I, so I figured out what happened. Probably five or six people counseled on you guys. And you was like, <laughs> who could we get? And I don't mind. I played Junior Varsity. I played JV. So yeah, I'm used to being second, third, fourth, fifth fiddle. So it's no big deal. It's okay. But I know some people had to counsel for you guys to put me on. No way. I love it. I love it. No, actually, you you are at the top of our list right here. You are right where you're supposed to be. So I we started, started doing this. I made a list of folks, of people, and I said, Willie Spears. Yep. Man, we we got to get him on the show. So um, we, we made it happen. Yep. So, and I'm so it means, glad that it worked out for this episode at this time. I believe in divine connection and nothing is happenstance or luck. Like it happens the way God wants it to happen. So, hey man, I read a quote one time. It said, coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Oh, wow. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. We got to yeah. remember oh, that one. Oh, Coincidence good. is God's way of staying yeah. anonymous. Yeah. 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 So good. Well, let me tell you guys and our audience, our network, our friends hanging out tonight. I'm just going to start it off and, and just tell you this man's bio is phenomenal. And you're going to gonna want to go follow him on all the things. But Coach Spears is an acclaimed keynote speaker. He's an author. We're going to talk about all of his books. He's a pastor, evangelist, FCA. He's an award-winning teacher and coach. Coach Spears has also been featured on CNN, Fox, HBO, and ESPN, and now Inside the Red Zone. <laughs> I got to add it to the resume. I got to add it to the resume. <laughs> he has spent 20 years in coaching and as the athletic director and head coach of several different sports. I mean, I mean that's incredible. What has that man had war exactly. yet? Can you imagine the people he has he has changed or he's yes, influenced for lives. all those different avenues? Man. The impact, the hats, the oh or, my or God. the ones I messed up. <laughs> I got one, one of my former students. Uh, his name is Demond Collins, and he has a business in Panama City where I live. And um, someone was bragging on me to him one day. You know, he was saying, Man, Coach Spears mentors you. Isn't that? And it's, it's a grown man. He's like 34, 35 years old. Isn't he great? Isn't he awesome? And Demond said, He wasn't awesome when we played against Lincoln, and he took me out of the game in <laughs> overtime, and we lost the game. He's not as great as y'all think he is. And I was like, thank you, Demar. You, you keep me humble. So I, I haven't helped everyone. Obviously, I messed you up 
because hey, it's been man. 20 years and you still remember that. Yeah. <laughs> you can't please everybody, man. Nobody's That's perfect. Right. Man. I'm sure you're That's hitting right. over 800. You know, we're talking about a bat now. There you go. i take that. i take that. That's right. I mean, that's amazing, though, that he would still remember that, whether it was good or bad for him. That's, yeah. that's a good thing. Well, it, it's yeah. still good to me. It, it's just bad to him because he wanted to be in the game and I sat him on the bench. So we still haven't agreed. <laughs> We've agreed to disagree on that one. I got that's you, right. Man. That's right. Well, look, Willie, we're going to go ahead and get talk about a few of your books. And, of course, I know you've written, what, 18, eight, 18 books? And uh, I just want to highlight just a few of them. Come in, we can be here all night talking about 18 new books. And of course, we want to talk about the, the, your teaching and coaching and, and a lot of other things that you do. But uh, one of the most popular books you've written was Transform Your Life from Good to Great. Can you talk a little bit about this book and talk for a little audience a little about how to achieve this? Right. So I think a lot of us, we, if we if be honest, we want a great life. People say, I want a great life. So how do you do that? And if we don't have the life we want, it's usually because we made bad choices along the way. So I talk to young people all the time, and I was just at an FCA camp in Louisiana, and I talked to the huddle leaders who are college students, and, and they asked me a lot of questions. And I told them, if you can get it right between 15 and 25, your life will be much better. And it was like, what does it mean to get it right? Well, one, you want to make good decisions. Smart people think about the future. So in transforming your life from good to great, we give several nuggets on how to help you in a lot of different areas. And I'll just cover the Fs. So faith, finance, uh, when it comes to your future, when it comes to fasting, which is sacrificing things, when it comes to fixing things that need to be fixed, when it comes to, um, we talk about your future fiance, like all of those things, we have a whole section, we talk about different things. And so when you, when you have a plan or a system, you can have success. When you try to wing it, you're usually gonna end up in a place you don't wanna be. So. When I travel and go different places, I put my desired destination in the GPS and it takes me exactly where I need to go. And when I go the wrong way, it says rerouting and gets me back on track. Many of us don't have a plan. We don't have any type of GPS for our life. We're just winging it and hope it works out. So transforming your life from good to great gives you an actual format, a plan that has principles and proven strategies to help you navigate through life. And then we take people who are already successful. So in sports and coaching, coach, you and I coach for a long time. And coaching, that would be uh, a guy like Nick Saban. You know, he's been successful. So we walk through how did he get to that place? Uh, if you talk about entertainment, you talk about great entertainers, uh, like very successful people like, uh, let's go with uh, Garth Brooks or, or Michael Jackson or Whitney Houston. Like, how did this happen? How did they get there? You talk about business. Of course, you have Jeff Bezos and, and Steve Wozniak and, and Steve Jobs. And so we walk through successful people that everyone knows. And then I bring it down to people that we may not know who use these same principles to be successful. So we want to transform our life from good to great in our finances, in our relationships, in our career. How do you do that? You have to have a system, you have to have strategies. And it starts with your foundational morals and values. And so we wrote that book back in 2014, and there's been a really good one for us. Oh. That's so good. You just said everything like I'm building a business and a brand, as well as we're working on what God's given us together, too. And that was it. Any hit on some of our favorite F words. Yeah. yeah. That we talk about it's the it's the F words, man. Yeah. The good F words. <laughs> good F words. That's right. Good F words. We always That's say right. if you hang out with us long enough, we're going to teach you the good F words. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but man, we, so you know, we bought it. We're gonna talk about your other book here in a few minutes. So we actually purchased, but we've got to get a copy of that. Book, yeah, man. we got to get that. I'll yeah, send it to you guys. guys. When it's over, send me your address. I'll send you one tomorrow. Uh, hey, that's real. awesome. Yeah. And we want to make sure and link in the show notes how everybody else can also find you and get the books as well. Yeah. yeah. And so one of my favorites is the win at home. I had to go get it just just to even be able to show it up so so this is win at home and you guys have got to have a copy of this one as well so let's talk about it for just a little bit you've got so win at home uh, there's a there's a devotional there that you have and yep. then there's also a book and so that's the most impactful book that i wrote um i, I was coach of the year uh, four different times so i've been coached three or four different times so i've been coach of the year uh, but I don't know if I've ever been husband of the year. <laughs> I've been teacher of the year. I'm just being honest. I've been teacher of the year, but I don't know if I've ever been, um, 
I've been teacher of the year, but I don't know if I've ever been father of the year. Yeah, so yeah. what I found in society is we get it wrong. We're trying to win in places where it doesn't matter. So we may be the number one insurance salesman. We may be the number one car salesman at our job. We may be the number one engineer, lawyer, uh, doctor, whatever. But if we're not winning at home, then we're missing the ball. David in the Bible was a great warrior, was a great king. He was a lousy husband and a lousy father. Yeah. Society awards us for being good at work, but no one talks about, are we good at home? And so the only way to know somebody is really winning at home is to talk to their spouse and talk to their children. Now, I don't think my spouse and my children would say I did a bad job at home, but I know I didn't put the same time and effort at home that I did at work. At work, I showed up early. I stayed late. I did whatever it took. At home, I did the bare minimum. I did what I was supposed to do, but I don't know if I always went the extra mile. And so in the book, we talk about famous people who've made quotes. I mentioned Garth Brooks earlier. Uh, we're excited. He's coming to Panama City here in a few weeks. So everybody in Panama City is excited to see Garth at the summer jam. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty awesome. So, and it's actually like two blocks from my house. And so uh, I, I could probably listen on my porch at the concert. But what, what's, what's crazy is Garth Brooks said this. So the only reason I'm repeating this is because Garth said it in his documentary on H&E. He, this is what he said. He said on A and E, he said, I lost my family because I was the number one entertainer in the world. And then his drummer came on and said, listen, not in America, in the world. In the mid 90s, he said, we were number one in the world. When we said we were coming to a town within 24 hours, all the tickets sold out. And then the drummer said, how can you be the number one entertainer in the world and the number one husband? You can't. How do you be the number one entertainer in the world and the number one father? You can't. So these are the words God said. God said, I forsake my family. Last week, I was in Canton, Ohio. I was speaking in Youngstown, and I had a little time, so I stopped by the Hall of Fame. And I stopped by the Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame. I looked at all those busts in there, and it was a surreal moment. And one of those busts is Jimmy Johnson. He was the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, the Miami Dolphins, uh, and, and several other teams. He said, the only reason I'm repeating this is because he said it. He said in his Hall of Fame speech that he never attended any of his son's games. He said he just didn't have time. He said, but I know you guys understand because I had a lot of work to do. That's very unfortunate. So it, what I'm saying is we, we celebrate. We put people in the Hall of Fame for winning at work. But none of us strive to be in the Hall of Fame for winning at home. And I've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of taking jobs without even talking to my spouse about it. I've been guilty of putting all my eggs and my emotions in the basket of winning a football game and living and dying by that. And so I've gotten it right a few times too. I've been offered some big time college jobs and turned them down because it wasn't best for my family. But earlier in my career, I wasn't winning at home. And so in the Bible, we, in the devotion, we talk about David's life. How David got it right for so many years leading up to his adulthood, defeating Goliath, um, playing the harp for Saul, so many things he did right. He could have killed Saul and Saul didn't even know he was right behind him in the cave two different times, but he didn't. He did it right. But then when he became an adult, when he became king, he just didn't get it right at home. He had multiple wives and the Bible says that should only be a king, should only have one wife, should multiply their wives. I believe that's Deuteronomy 17, 17. And then, uh, you know, maybe first Kings, uh, but it says a man should only have one wife. And then, you know the story, his daughter ended up being with his own son. His son killed his other son and Absalom tried to kill him. He just wasn't a horrible dad, and a ho but he was a man after God's own heart. And there's a statue right now, right now of David still standing because we celebrate people winning at work, but at what cost? Many of us win at work at the cost of losing at home. It's the last thing I'll say. You guys are in Alabama. So I'm gonna ask y'all a question. How long did it take them to replace Nick Saban? Within 48 hours to 72 within, hours. Yep. Right, within Quick. within 48 hours. Quick. Yep. So even if you're the best at what you do, they're gonna replace you. Yep. At home, irreplaceable. So we should focus on winning at home more than winning at work. I'm not saying Coach Saban didn't win at home. I met Miss Terry, I met Coach Saban, of course, several times, and it seemed like they got it down pat. What I'm saying is many of us are not realizing that they're going to replace you. They're gonna fire you, and your replacement yeah. is probably already on the phone 
talking to them while you're in the job. Yeah. That's not the case at home. So those books just encourage us to win where it matters the most. Man, that's that's so huge. Good. I mean, I know we've been, I've been yes. in the coach profession a long time, and I see guys, uh, you know, later in, in their years, says, "God, man, I wish I'd have done more at home with my kids." It's like with Coach Johnson, you know, it, it's unbelievable. Now you 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 hit it, man. And it's sad that you know they win at all costs. But if you're not winning at home, you're not a winner. You know, God, your family, then your job. You got to get that in order, and you will succeed. But man, that is. That, that is a great, great message right there. It is. So. It's it's life changing. It's life giving, but it's life changing if you apply. And I just love that you've broken it down in a 10 week devotional, you know, for those that are hungry for it and ready for it, just absorb it, get it in your life and watch what will begin to happen and yeah. change. Right. And I'm going to tell you this, anybody that's watching this, if they contact us, I will send them a free copy of that Win at Home devotional. The reason we made it 10 weeks is because a football season is usually 10 weeks. And each devotional is only 20 minutes. So when I was a coach, and Coach Mills, I'm sure you're the same way, we had meetings on Sunday. Some guys do it on Saturday, but we had Sunday meetings as a staff. I designed this to start your meeting off every Sunday with your staff during football season. It's mm -hmm. only a 20-minute devotional. That's all it takes. It's actually less than 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes if you read all the scriptures together yeah. in a group. But it's a 20-minute devotional. It's an easy way to start your meeting out. It's 10 weeks. It's like there's 10 weeks in a football season. And anyone watching this, if they contact us, go to williespears.com, or you can just find me on social media, and then I will send you a free copy of that devotion. Man, that's that's awesome. so yeah. awesome. Guys, you've got to take yeah. advantage of that. Don't don't let this moment mm -hmm. pass you by. He He's gifting you this that that's awesome yeah we love that absolutely yeah all right man moving on to the next question <laughs> and uh, we got a lot of talk to you about it i don't want to keep you too long tonight so man you know the first time i heard you speak i i, I mentioned this earlier before we got on the show was was an fca event down in orange beach alabama um or what are you still involved with fca and what does fca mean to you uh, fca is the greatest ministry in the world in my opinion and that's a huge statement so I've been on staff at churches. I'm an ordained minister. I love church. I, I, I can't count more than five times in my entire life that I wasn't in church on a Sunday, in my entire life. And so I don't say that to brag on my church attendance. I say that to say I'm not against church. I love church. But I believe FCA is the greatest ministry in the world. And I support a lot of ministries in the world. And the reason it's the greatest ministry in the world, in my opinion, is because it puts Jesus in the schools mm -hmm. and our children are in the school yes. and most children don't go to church. That's why it's the greatest ministry in my opinion. Uh, I used to be an area director for FCA. I've been a representative for FCA. I've been on staff uh, many times in Florida and in Georgia. Uh, right now I'm just a donor for FCA and a speaker. I, we, uh, I, me and my family, we donate to the ministry because we believe in it so much, but I do a lot of speaking for FCA a lot. Last summer, I did 17 camps. And the summer before that, I did 16 or 17 camps. I lose count. And uh, this summer, we decided to do zero camps. We're going to take a break. Uh, but last week, I actually did one camp in Louisiana. And I don't count that as summer because it's not June. So we did one last week. But we're going to take June and July off from FCA camps. But the last two summers, I was only home on Father's Day, which is my dad's birthday usually. And uh, I was home. Well, the 4th of July, we, we went to a camp in uh, Georgia that we've gone to for the last 12 years. So FCA means so much to me. Uh, when I go speak in schools, I normally do an FCA huddle while I'm there. We do a lot of fields of faith, courts of faith. We do a lot of fundraiser banquets. Uh, but I've spoken in FCA in over 20 states. Uh, uh, I do a lot in North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Wow. I was just in Illinois speaking at FCA uh, an event the other day. So yeah, we love FCA. We do a lot, a lot of work with FCA. Man, that's that's totally awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We got to give a shout out to. Um, hold on, break. We lost him. You still there? No. It's just one word, like um, shanks. I bet. They had a phone call. All right, break for a second. 
Time out. <laughs> Time out. All they do is call us back. Yeah, you should be able to come back in. I feel like a casual surfer girl today. <laughs> Here we go. I think I see it flashing. So what do we leave off of? I'm so sorry. Somebody, somebody called my phone. That's why I should have done this on my computer. I apologize. I was trying okay. to ignore them, and it cut y'all off. That's so okay. That's okay. No, no Thanks. worries. That actually happened with um, Chris Angels. No, I'm fast Shane. Taylor. Shane, a kid that I coached at Davidson, played in Alabama, but I call him Shane. We had him on the show, and that been released yet. The same thing happened to him. He got a call. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah. We'll we'll have um, this ben, all be edited out. Ben will edit, yep. and we'll just yep. we'll start over right yeah. here. Sorry, all right. that's okay. All right, so um, all right, Coach Spears, let me ask you something, man. I saw where you spoke to the University of Oklahoma, Florida State, and Clemson. Was this last year? Yeah, last football season. Yes, sir. Man, that is unreal, man. Tell us a little bit about that experience talking to, to programs like that. Well, man, it's huge to, to, to be able to speak to the, the highest caliber of teams in the world and to have the relationship with those coaches. So Coach Norvell and Coach Venables, those guys text me periodically just to say what's up. Uh, Coach Venables' wife uh, just was uh, cured of cancer a little while ago. I believe it was cancer. And I just reached out to him to tell him I've been praying for his family. And he sent me a long text back saying thank you. Uh, Coach Norvell, the same thing after they had what I believe they they – they didn't get done right. It was said that way at the end of the season. And so I reached out to him. He sent me a long text saying, thank you so much. And, and it means a lot coming from you. And so it just, it shows how humble these guys are. I mean, these guys are not just the money side, but just the position they have of influence. And uh, for them to want me to talk to their team means a lot. I've been a head football coach at seven different high schools. And I just didn't let anybody talk to my team. You know, we've had NFL guys in town and somebody said, hey, man, he'll be great to talk to your team. And sometimes their morals and values just didn't line up with what we were trying to do with our team. So even though they were a big name, we just didn't give them that access. So uh, it just means a lot to me uh, that Coach Norvell wanted me to speak to his team to kick the season off. And then Coach Sweeney, I was able to talk to Clemson as well. And then I was able to talk to OU twice last year. And then a bunch of smaller colleges as well. But those three names people really know. One college I talked to, Benedict College, uh, they won the uh, – they won their conference. They're a Division II HBCU team. And it was an honor to be their speaker. I spoke to them uh, every two or three weeks throughout the season on Zoom. And in one of my calls, uh, Coach, I got too excited. And I was screaming and hollering. Y'all know how I do if you watch my videos. <laughs> and I'm going off. I said, it's going to take what it takes. Are y'all ready to win? Are y'all ready? Matter of fact, if you go to the championship, I'm coming to South Carolina. If you go to the championship, I will be there. You got my word. And the call was over. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can get to South Carolina. I don't know if I have a speaking engagement that day. I, I, I got too excited. And them jokers end up going all the way to the championship. Man, that's awesome, man. I yeah. love it. And so, yeah, so I spoke, <laughs> I spoke to them, and uh, they went undefeated that season, uh, and they end up 12-0, and then they went to the D2 playoffs, and they lost, I think, the first or second round. But they won their conference championship game. They actually beat Tuskegee right there in the great state of Alabama uh, for the championship game. But uh, it, it was – I was uh, talking was it Tuskegee a mile. I think it was Tuskegee. But I was talking a little too fast, a little too reckless. But I went there live, and I spoke to them live. And it definitely wasn't because of me, but they won the game by like 30 or 40 points. So uh, we spoke to a lot of colleges, big and small, a lot of high schools, but OU um, and uh, Florida State and also uh, Clemson. And then in a, in a week, we're going to Kentucky. I'll be at the University of Kentucky on uh, June 5th. And we're trying to work out the logistics. We're speaking to Deion Sanders' team, Colorado Buffs. They reached out to us a few months ago. And so nice. it's been really an honor to be able to speak to these big nice. programs. Hey, I got to tell you, man, when you when I heard you speak down in Orange Beach and, uh, you know, a lot of, of course, it was a lot of coaches there. And, uh, man, well, I was so pumped up. Say, come on, man, let's go out in the lobby and get a three-point stance one-on-one. No I'm, doubt. I'm pictures, man. I was ready after hearing Willie talk, man. Let's, let's go board talk, drill. Yeah, right now. Go board drill right now. And then, Michelle,
call the trainer because we're both going to need to go to the emergency room. <laughs> but we're going to be excited in that moment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, I love it. Do and you got Just, just go watching him go from yeah. zero to 60. I love it. I mean, man. I love it. Yeah. So, have you got any plans, uh, any lined up for this coming year? Yeah, Kentucky is going to be in a week. Oh, yeah, I know you got Kentucky in June 5th. Right. So, the, most of my speaking is in schools. And so I don't I don't do a lot of teams or a lot of faith based. You know, uh, we, we, to be honest, we get too many requests. If, if I did all the teams and all the faith based events, I would be doing seventy events a month. Right now, I do thirty. So I do thirty presentations a month in twelve states. Okay. If we took every team and every church or every FCA, then yeah. I would be at seventy plus. Yeah. And um, and that that's just not healthy. And so we've done we've done that. We've said yes to everyone before, and my voice was gone, and my energy wasn't there, and I was never home, and so I was a hypocrite. I'm saying when at home, but I'm never at home myself. And so uh, we cut back. So now we really do mostly schools. We do a lot of professional development with teachers, and we do a lot of school assemblies. And we still do some teams, and we still do some faith based, but we've cut back where it used to be about 30, 30, 30 percentage wise, about 33% to each one. Now we're about 10% faith-based, 10% teams, and about 80% uh, education. Gotcha. Wow, wow. Well, let me ask this question because um, I think it's so relevant right now. Coach, there's a lot, a lot of broken homes. We know that. There's a lot of kids with just a single parent or some of them in situations where there's actually no parent and they're living with another family member or even friends. So can you share and give, give us a word of encouragement um, about this issue and, and, and what they're facing and just some encouragement for them? Yeah, so it's, it's tough. You don't know everybody's situation. Um, I, what I've learned a long time ago is never to say what situation I won't be in. You know, it's easy to say, I would never do that. or I would, But you don't know everyone's situation. And so the Bible says, and that's what I use as my guide, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they grow old, they won't depart from it. And so for me, when I break that down, train up a child. It doesn't say train up your child. It says train up a child. So I think it's all of our job to train up children. Yeah. The number one way to do that is the way we live our life. And so if someone comes from a single parent home, they probably go to a school. So they're at the school more than they're at home anyway. And if they play a sport, these are all surrogate mothers and fathers who can train up this child. We can't do anything about why the parents aren't married or why they got a divorce. That's none of our business. But what we can do when the child is in our presence, we can teach them morals and values we can teach them how to love other people. We can teach them how to get along with people who are not like them. And that's one thing I love about sports. Our country is not good at that. Our country has majored in division. Our country loves to, to talk negatively about someone who doesn't believe the same way that we do. Children don't have that. They don't get that until they start voting, unfortunately. And so what we can do is show them how to love one another. I once read a quote that said, we should preach the gospel constantly using words when necessary. So that means I don't have to preach to you or talk down to you or tell you what I believe is right. I can just show you with the way I live my life. And I think that will help us with the broken home. Another aspect of winning at home, uh, if I told you two right now, if I say I got a friend named Johnny, he's divorced and uh, and because of that, he doesn't be, he's not around his kids much. And we wrote down the hours he's with his kids. I could take another man who's been married for 25, 30 years who's a top, top executive and write down the time he spends with his children and it's the same amount of time. So just because there's a mom and dad in the home doesn't mean the home's not broken. Many times we think a broken home is only one parent lives with the children. A lot of times both parents, both parents live with the child, but they don't spend any time with the child. The father's in the uh, uh, living room watching Sports Center. The mom's in the bedroom watching the Hallmark Channel. The kids are in their bedrooms on their devices. Yep. So they're not even together. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then, yeah. right, the dad is so busy working or the mom is so busy working that they don't spend time with the child anyway. So we yep. say it's not a, a broken home, but it is a broken home. 
because they're not communicating. And so yeah. I think the key is to be intentional about adding value to your home. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of work when you're tired, when you get home. I used to be on the phone with a recruit and my son want to play catch. And, you know, so I had to put the phone down and I had to have a rule. When I come in the house, put that phone down for that first hour, my family gets all my attention. And I would be lying to you if I told you I always kept that rule. It's very hard to be present at home if you're a go-getter on your job. Or even if you're not, some people want to come home to go to sleep. You know, you don't want to just engage your kids and play with them and talk to them, but that's what it takes. And so I think the answer to your question is it's all of our job. Everyone in the country, we're all on the same team. It's all of our job to come together and train up a child in the way that they should go. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That, that's the answer. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know, um, back years ago when I was in college, I, I had one of my professors tell me, he said, you know, I think it was a sociology class I had to take in the education field. He said, the best gift that you could ever give your kid is to love each other, your spouse, in front of your kids. I was like, wow, that's pretty good right there. You that know, is good. See. That's real good. Yeah. Really good. I mean, you can buy gifts or whatever. Whatever, but spending time and spending time with your spouse in front of those kids and loving each other because you're creating that love and, and that atmosphere in that home. I'll never forget that. He told me that. So, yeah. All right. Well, they got to uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just agreeing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Willie, a lot of our, our, our guests are, are in the teaching and coaching profession. And you, you know, you've been an ex teacher and coach, and I'm in the teaching and coaching profession. Sometimes morale can get very low. Can you just give our teachers and coaches, our audience, just some words of encouragement about just staying strong, man, staying in there? You know, low it's pay. hard. Go ahead. Yeah, you're right. It's low pay. Uh, it's the most underappreciated profession in the world. But everyone had a teacher. Everyone you meet, I don't care if they were homeschooled or they learned on the internet, someone had to teach them. And so I, I really believe that teaching is the most important profession in the world because teachers teach all professions. And every one of us can name our, one of our favorite teachers. If you ask someone who is one of your favorite teachers and why, they will tell you. And the reasons are usually they pushed me, they believed in me, they saw something in me, they cared for me. But unfortunately, we all can name that teacher that we didn't like. And that's normally that lazy teacher, that teacher that did the bare minimum, that teacher that barely came to work, that teacher that never got up from their desk. And so I, I, I want to encourage teachers by letting them know how valuable they are and reminding them that they matter. And so chief, I wanna tell you that you matter. And, and someone once asked a question to, to a, a teacher, this big time executive was at a banquet and they was trying to brag about how much money they made. And they asked the teacher, how, they said, what do you make? What, what, what do you make? And that teacher, as they were flashing up their, their, their bill, they said, I make a difference. I make Johnny who has no pencil and paper. I make Johnny do his work anyway. I make Sally, whose mom and dad just got a divorce and she's depressed and have anxiety. I make her believe in herself. I make a difference. Anybody can make money. Everybody can't make a difference. And so what I've learned is there's never going to be enough money. So if it was enough money, the guys in the NFL and the NBA would say, I don't need any more money, but they're not. We're paying guys a hundred million dollars a year in the NBA. Now that's crazy. That's ridiculous, but right. it's never going to be enough. So if teachers did make more money. So when my first year teaching, I made $26,500 and I was coaching three sports. That's what I made. And there was not enough money. When I finished coaching, I made $75,000. I was an administrator and it was not enough money. It's never going to be enough. I've never met anybody said, man, I make enough money. I don't need any more money. And so I, I get it. I agree. Teachers should make more money. No question. And I was, I want to teach right now. I was actually an administrator at an alternative school. And while I was speaking full time, like, like less than a year ago, and the district told me I couldn't do both. They said it was a conflict of interest because I had some contracts with that district. So I had to, I had to step aside from that. But it's important to understand the value that you have. And this, this is how you know teachers are valuable. I'm going to give you this one example. So if I met you guys at Orange Beach and I said, hey, Danny, look, man, I'm traveling and I lost my cell phone. So can I use your cell phone just for a few days and I'll mail it back to you? I imagine you would say, Willie, man, I wish I could help you, but I can't, you can't have my cell phone, man. I, I'll try to get you one. 
I could talk to some people, but I can't eat. So if I say, hey, look, Michelle, I have a rental car and, and, and it's messed up and it's going to take them like seven or eight hours to get here to fix it. And I got to get to another engagement. Can I just borrow your vehicle just to drive over there? I'm have it for a day or two and I'll bring it back. I would imagine you would say, hey, Willie, whoa, huh. I like your little speech, buddy, but uh, I don't know if you can take my car for two days now. So you wouldn't let me and I probably wouldn't let you either. I wouldn't let you borrow my cell phone, which is replaceable, or my vehicle, which is replaceable. But every single day, parents let strangers borrow their children. Wow. Every day. That proves that teaching is the most important because we put teachers in part in charge of what's most important to us. What's most important to me are my son and daughter. More yeah. than anything, they're the most important thing. I, and I give them the strangers for 180 days to May, kindergarten through 12th grade plus college. That wow. proves the value of a teacher. So I want to encourage teachers to know you matter, you know how valuable you are, and don't allow money to dictate your value. Don't let that, don't be that, that's a slave mentality. If you give me this much money, I feel appreciated. Now, with that being said, teachers should make more money. No question. Why? Post office workers make more than teachers. So we obviously have the system backwards. Yeah. Teachers should make more money. No question at all. However, if we got into teaching for the money, then, then we got into it for the wrong reason. That's I true. believe if we chase the impact, the income will come. I know, let me tell you, I know several teachers that drive nice vehicles. Not Lamborghinis, but they drive nice Honda Civic. They drive a nice Accord. They drive Nissan Altima, Nissan. Mach. So if you, if, if, if we can make it work, I made it work with twenty six thousand dollars a year. I don't live any different now than I did then. And the reason I say this is because I I wouldn't allow myself to pity on myself because I wasn't appreciated. My students showed me my value, not my district. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's really really good. Yeah. And, uh, I told you guys it was going to be life changing. Like this will <laughs> change your life if you will ingest this information and to go follow. So this is the point where we want to share. Like, how can they find you? How can they find your books? How can they further connect with you? Just my name, Willie, like Willie Nelson, and Spears, like Britney Spears. My two cousins, Willie Nelson <laughs> and Britney Spears. So just. Just go to willyspears.com or, or Google Willie Spears and all of our social media will come up. We love to come talk to your group, your organization. I have an agent named Crystal. She handles our schedule. She loves to talk to you. She's absolutely amazing and, uh, to work that out for us to come. But And if, you, if you're watching this show, like I said, I'll send you a free win at home devotional. Uh, we love to add value to your life in that way. I love that. I was going to ask if you had someone specifically already on your team, but you mentioned Crystal. So that's great for them to know. We want to link everything in our show notes and make sure that everybody can find you and get more information and book you up if, if, if they can and want to. Um, I love the connection with FCA. I think I was about to give a shout out for Dennis Hayford mm -hmm. and the South Alabama FCA. He's the man, baby. Dennis is the man. Dennis is the man. Yes. One of my favorite guys of all time, man. I love doing the same. He is, and his whole team, man. I mean, yeah. it's just been one a blessing. Guys, then it's going to be one of those guys in heaven where somebody's going to come tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, man, you don't know me, but because you organized this FCA event, I gave my life to Christ. Or because yeah. you had this fundraiser, I was able to have a Bible, and that was my first Bible. Like, he's going to be one of those guys in heaven where people tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, look, man, I know you don't know me, but I'm up here because of you. Yeah, then yes. it's the real deal. He's a great people. I man. believe that. And I love I love his wife, Jan. And they've just now started a um, go around on that side and touch that battery real quick. Okay. It needs the white light. Which one? Right here. The back one. Wiggle it and see that on the computer, the white light come on. There it goes. Boy, we have had some technical difficulties tonight. That's okay. That's okay. That's, That's, okay. Right. That's okay. That's right. Coming back in. White lights on. 
Yep. We're about to wrap it up anyway. Okay. Wait on me. <laughs> so yeah, just shouting out Dennis Hayford and his precious wife, Jan, South Alabama FCA. Um, what a great connection that we all have there. We love them. They have just actually started a coaches wives program as well. And I honor your beautiful wife. And I loved when we got to see you guys on the stage at the coaches timeout, the two of you together and what you were doing it impacted and sparked this in us yeah. that we that, just that, thought, awesome. hey, why can yeah. we not sit down and have a conversation and just draw people in to say, this is real. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's yeah. real life. A coach's wife ministry is needed in every area. My wife, she read a book a long time ago called A Coach's Wife. It's a blue book with a big trophy on it. It has a blonde lady holding a big trophy. And, uh -huh. and that book really breaks down what it's like. The things that a coach's wife goes through, many people don't know. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been blessed. Uh, Tanika, absolutely amazing uh, throughout my coaching career, uh, being there to support. And we've spoken on many FCA panels. We had, we've actually turned down a lot. Uh, because there's been so many opportunities, but it's been a blessing for us to be a blessing to others. Right? Yeah, I love that. Please tell your beautiful wife I said hello. <laughs> I would love to have her on and we'll do something and maybe do a Zoom and speak to the coaches' wives. Yeah, she was the one that interrupted this call, so I don't know if I'm going to tell her <laughs> or not that uh, you said hello. That's so cute, so cute. Uh, well, we just honor you. Coach, we honor you and we speak blessings on you and everything that you're doing. And as you go forth, everything you put your hands to do, we just pray that God will continue to multiply it for you, that he will, Isaiah 22, 22, open those new doors for you and just continue to give you the blessing and the favor to do what you're doing because you're being bold. You're being bold and standing up and making such an impact. So we thank you and we bless thank you. you. I got to tell the audience one more time. If you want to be changed and you want people to change around you, you need to read Willie Spears books and you need to book him for an appointment. He will change life. And I promise you, you'll be changed yeah. by this man yeah. right here on our show tonight. Just go connect with him on Twitter and youtube and all of the social but definitely like i get a lot of value out of your shorts on twitter they're just they're powerful yeah, so, so thank you and we are so honored that you were here with us tonight well thank you again man you have a great evening appreciate you saying thank y'all for having yeah. us keep up the good work it's fourth and two what you gonna do what you gonna do fourth and two let's go <laughs> let's go so <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Coach, I'm, coach, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Fourth and two, we're going to score a touchdown, but we're getting this first down. We're going to run outside beer to the three surface side, and there's nothing you can do about it. We're going downhill. We're going to hit you right in your mouth, and then we're going to help you up in the name of Jesus. That's right. I hear That's you, man. It. We got it. We love you. All right. Take care, man. Love y'all, too. Thanks so much.